Hello, welcome to the part 14 of the project dashboard and in this section we're going to be looking at adding more function to our dashboard. Well, if you look at it, it seems everything looks good. However, there's a couple of things we can do to make our dashboard even more interactive. But before we even dive in further to adding functionality to our dashboard, there's something we need to fix. If you look at the search bar here and also the edit and notification bell, it seems to be different from what we have on the markup. Let us see what the markup look like. Now you can see that on bigger screen, it displays on the right. In other words, we need to set this section to display flex so that when the user visits with a big screen, the user will be able to see it just like this. All right, let's dive into what we have and see how it works. In the HTML, we are looking for the search. Also where we have the form. Now, wrapping these two things, we have search div, which is wrapping, you can see it right here. So which means we just need to go back to our CSS and look for where it is. So coming back to the CSS, we can just try to search, either search for it. But um, I'm just going to scroll up and look for where we have the declaration. So here is it. Now let's try to see what we've done. Coming back to the HTML, um, let's see. So we targeted the first span here, which is for the notification, and also the second is for the edits. So let's see the trick we use in the CSS. So you can see the end child. The end child one means for the first span, which is going to be this one. If you put two there, it's going to be the second one. Okay. Now that we're able to identify uh, where the style is, um, we just need to style and make sure it works. Okay, so um, we need to just add display relative to the span itself. So I'm just going to say position relative. Okay, then what we want to add now is a before pseudo class. Now, the before pseudo class is what we are going to use to achieve the dots here. Now, the designer put it on the right side. If we like, we can. And if we like, we can put it before. So let's just go for the before. If I just go ahead and... So all I need to do here is just to add before pseudo class before. Okay, so now that I have before, Let's just make the basic declaration. For before to work, you have to set your content. In this case, our content is going to be empty. Then we need the width of, let's say, 10 pixel. The height as well is going to be, the height is going to be 10 pixel. Then we need background color. Um, the background color is going to be sandy brown. Okay, so let's even just go check our design if anything is popping up yet. If we refresh, nothing is really showing here. So what we can do is, so what we can do right now is to continue styling. We want the position to be absolute, absolute. So you can see that we set position relative to the notification bell itself and we are setting it absolute here so that wherever it's floating to it to be relative to the bell okay so now that we set it to absolute let's see if it's going to show now you can see that we have um, just a box 10 by 10 pixel box showing this is cool so this is showing us that what we are doing is working so what we can do right away is to just go ahead and also add border radius just for you to give us that curve effect. 
So I'm just going to say 50%. And if we refresh, if I just zoom in, so you see, you can see that we have that curve effect. That is cool. Okay, so um, I the positioning isn't too really looking cool. So let's let's bring it down a bit. So I can just say top. We can just give it top of like five pixel, five pixel. Now, if I save it, you can see that it moved downward a bit. Um, this is very very cool. Okay, now that we're able to achieve this. The next thing we want to do really is to display flex so that whatever we have here is going to display just like we have it in our design. And how do we do that? We need to understand um, what we need to set display flex on. Our display flex is going to be on the search. Now display flex is going to be on the search. And for this to happen, we need to understand that we don't want display flex on mobile. We want the display flex only on bigger screen sizes. In other words, we need to search for where we have our media query. Before we even set the media query, let's just go ahead and look at multiple screens. Let's go and check and see which screen is going to be best for that flex display. So I'm just going to come to my responsive app, which allow me, of course, to view several screen sizes at the same time. Okay, so on mobile, we can leave it like this. Um, one thing we can do is from the iPad, that is going to be 768 pixel, upward, we want to display flex. Let's see how we can achieve that. So, which means we need to scroll back to where we have the media query of 768 pixel. Then there, we need to just declare our style. So let me just leave a comment and just call it dashboard search. Okay, so um, remember we have dashboard class at the top. We have um, the main, and let me just show you what I mean. So you have the main class, right? Then at the end, at the top here, you also have the dashboard then um, you have the search. So you can see, which means for specificity sake, you can target this, join this as well, and join this. Let's see how we can make that happen in CSS. So I'm just gonna say dashboard, uh, main, also search. Okay, and of course, our specificity is set, so let's declare our style. First, I just want to say display flex. I like to say that a lot. So display flex. And if I, of course, come to this point, you can see that it's already displaying flex. Why not just go back to our responsive app and see where it's starting from? So you can see the 768 pixel is displaying flex. And if we come back and see all of these big screen sizes, Look at this big screen size as well, it's showing flex. And every other small screen size is showing just one on the row. So that makes a lot of sense. If we go back to our style and just even try more to specify what happens. So let's say justify content. We want it to share the space between. So we're just gonna say space between, not around, between. Now, there is something that we need to do. Um, if I refresh right now, you can see that um, this look really cool, okay? But there is something we need to do as well. So let's say um, you can see that the search and also this is not on the same line, okay? So let's see what is even pushing this downward in our style. So if you just scroll down, if we scroll down a bit, or maybe let's even say it's difficult to find, what we can do is just to inspect. So we can just inspect. I'm just going to inspect that segment. And so this is our form. So I'm just going to assume that whatever thing is pushing it is targeted on the form. Now let's look at the style that is making that happen. 
So if you look at it on line 47, we have margin top. And if we remove it, everything seems to be all right. Okay, so, but before we go and remove that on line 47, let's make sure that we are handling the spacing just so it doesn't hit the bar. So what we need to do in that regard is we need to just make another declaration here. We can just say margin top. We can just say it should be like 50 pixel. And if we come back here and check it, so you can see a margin of top of 50%, which is cool. You can see that it looks cool relative to our logo here. So what we need to do right now is to remove this, to remove this entire, the entire thing that is pushing it downward. If we just go back and let's say we want to go to the line, um, to go to line on VS code, you can just say control G, I'm just gonna type 40. Uh, so right here we have, we have 10, okay, let's even refresh. Okay, so, okay, we have, we're going for 47. Let's look at where we are, 47 here. Okay, 47. Now, now for the fact that this work well on the mobile, the moment we remove it, we'll have issues with the mobile view. Um, so I need to clear the cache here. To clear cache, I think I'm just going to say um, nothing is happening yet. Let's just try to understand what's going on. Okay, so we already added the margin at the bottom. So I think it worked. So we can just go ahead and delete this, which is okay. Let me see, just make sure that there's no cookies. We refresh. Okay, everything worked pretty much well. All right. Um, even though I feel that the space here is so much, um, let's just go back and reduce it. Just to inspect this, to see again. So 44, we also have something on 44. Let's see what that is. On line 44. Okay, this is still here. Now, let us try to reduce this to like 10. Let's see. Mm, it looks okay, it looks good. It looks a bit okay. If we refresh this, it looks okay. Um, on mobile, it doesn't really look okay. So you can see here. But let's go back and let's increase it to like maybe 40. Okay, I think it's sort of like look okay. Um, once it's 40, let us then go back to our media query and just do a better job. So it looks 40 here. It's okay as 40. But what we can do um, to even reduce, to write a cleaner code, how about we just even copy this entire thing and go back to line 40. So on line 40, we have the search form input. So let's just even remove this at this level. Let's try to paste the search, the search wrapper itself and just give it margin top of like maybe 30 or 40. So that way, whatever is pushing this, targeting this 
form alone. It will be targeting the entire thing, which makes a lot of sense. So even if we check on Safari, everything seems to be okay. Let's say we, we're going to push it more a bit. Let's give it 40. Okay, it looks okay. But let's just go back on... Let's go back to the media query. Um, so on the media query, let's look at what's going on. In fact, let me just close this editing tool. We're done inspecting. And if we check, um, I'm somehow not really okay with the fact that there's no space immediately under the search. So what we can do still in this, we can just add margin bottom of like 50 pixel. And if you look at it, there's a breathing space right now, which is very, very cool. Okay. Um, one other thing is, let's, why not just we bring this down a bit so that it's on the same line with the logo. For me to do that, I can increase this to like 60. Let's see. Margin top to like 70. Nothing is happening. Let's look at another browser just to be sure. Okay, if that's the case, let's see if we can just target the form alone. Target the form alone. Sorry, I'm not supposed to open that. Just the form. Let's push it margin top. It's just going to be maybe like 10 pixel. We don't need all this one. Let's check it out. You can see that is down a bit. So that make a lot of sense. So at this point, we're able to achieve our notification displaying side by side. And even if we go ahead and check all of the other screen sizes, it looks pretty much cool on them. Okay. This is very, very cool. Now, the next thing we need to do really is to add JavaScript functions so that we can search our project. So take for instance, if I say graphics, I should be able to see all the projects with the keyword graphics. And if I want to search or filter, finish, recent, all those things should be possible with JavaScript. And the next lesson, that's exactly what we'll be doing. And I'll see you in the next one.